called arcade there is time carry the vacuum tube wedge and guess what's time it is unboxing time again this is gonna be a big one so we've got this box full of stuff and oh my goodness this is gonna be a nice one Mystery unfolding. Bubble wrap ASMR. Not boobs, just tubes. Telephone gun EC92. I need to test those. some more of that totally tubular boxes That's the L34. But the most important part Jeez, it's really professionally packed. Goodness, this is pretty discombobulated now. Wow, would you look at that? The W100 vacuum tube amplifier that I will need to repair. And I can see it now that there's such a lot of work to do on this one. Let's get it over to the bench. <sighs> wow. 
my strength is failing me. Ugh, looks like the sump is in a really bad shape. Guess I'm gonna do more than just a uncle dog on this thing. There's, uh, there's dirt and rust all over the chassis. <sighs> because this amplifier has been scrapped. And uh, one, of, uh, one of the people, one of the girls uh, at uh, the Usagi Electric Discord server found it uh, in a scrap heap and uh, rescued it. And did what shouldn't be done. She turned it on, said it was working, yeah, the, the first thing I will have to take care of is, is this. Not sure if it was damaged in transport or in the scrap heap, but this does not look good. And I also need to reattach the handle. Oh, look at that. It looks completely broken off. Figures. Like, let me just try, uh, try grabbing it with pliers and unscrewing this thing. And if this does not help, then I will probably have to go to the fab lab and weld something to that reminder of the screw. Bloody friggin' hell. This does not look good at all. So I guess that uh, for the time being I will just uh, try looking up some uh, screws that uh, I can barely connect the two plate, the two pieces of metal together. Stainless steel M5 will do the job just fine. Looking for some nuts. That would be one.
come on, where's the other one? Yeah. I was just putting this back together <coughs> and now at least I can turn it around and let's look at the wire harness and all the electronics on this thing. We've got some nice uh, fire capacitors, none of that paper and wax rubbish, a light bulb, MLT resistors that uh, have been probably replaced. Um, this does not look like the original. Looks like a uh, Ducati capacitor, but it does not look like um, the original either. The wiring seems to be original. This uh, this does not look good at all. It was probably connected to this capacitor. And there's the input wire. And uh, there's the ground. And there are output connectors. Uh, together with a DIN uh, connector here. So the underside of the chassis looks far better than uh, the upper side and this is a pretty good thing. The wiring looks pretty nice on this thing actually. I might not have to do it uh, all over again like I did uh, on um, one of the other W100 uh, amplifiers that I worked on back in 2000s because that was a, a complete rewire project <laughs> so the, the thing I'm gonna do on this amplifier it's uh, it's mostly just uh, stripping and cleaning the upper part cleaning the capacitors uh, looking throwing science at the wall and looking what sticks the needle meter looks nice it's uh, it's gotten a little bit unscrewed. And then this wafer switch uh, looks like uh, this is a ceramic one rather than phenolic, which is a very good thing. But it definitely needs some love. This is a uh, main filter choke for the plate circuits. And this is the filter choke for the phase inverter and uh, and uh, screen grid uh, circuit. And I will uh, almost certainly be cleaning that one because it looks hmm, pretty gross. Underneath this can uh, we've got uh, a mains transformer. 
the, the metal can provide some uh, additional uh, shielding ag against the electromagnetic uh, fields. And there's, uh, there are three sockets for the ECC81 or 82 and 83 tubes. And of course EL34 sockets. Those sockets are for the EY88 uh, canotrons uh, or rectifier diodes. Those diodes can uh, take uh, quite a walloping. They, uh, they were originally meant uh, for booster diodes and TV circuits. And uh, this amplifier has this. Um, this would be the um, EZ81 uh, double rectifier diode, but uh, it has been uh, replaced with uh, solid state uh, full wave, not full bridge rectifier. I want to make this amplifier totally tubular again. <laughs> if you if you see here. This is also a circuit modification. Uncovering the... Can I uncover it? Uh, not right now, but... I'm absolutely certain that um, those are 1N407 uh, uh, diodes, probably connected uh, to in series. Replacing the original uh, EY88 uh, rectifier diodes. Here we have a BIOS rectifier and uh, the BIOS potentiometers right here. There is a uh, certain design uh, drawback uh, on uh, how the BIOS is done on, on those potentiometers. Like uh, if, the, if the wiper of the pot uh, loses contact with the track, then the tubes lose their bias uh, altogether and they, like uh, like Steffi from the Skunky Designs uh, channel says, they can go nuclear. <laughs> this kills the tubes, so uh, I will be doing the mod that I uh, also knew back in 2000 and, um, and uh, practice on all of my amps uh, that used uh, fixed bias that uh, I'm gonna make it in, a, in such a way that uh, whenever the wiper loses contact with the track, then the tube gets uh, the maximum negative uh, negative uh, voltage on the grid, and that's a fail-safe design, rather than uh, rather than killing the tube. Uh, it will just uh, cut the tube uh, out of action, uh, making it uh, pass a negligible uh, small current. And by the way, I just found, I just found a fault, and it doesn't look like a catastrophic one. But here, if we take a closer look. Oh, come on, switching system, what's with you? Bench zoom, yeah. If you take a closer look here... Let me move the amplifier. The insulation on this cable is uh, thermally damaged and, uh, and broke off. But uh, the copper didn't uh, didn't break, fortunately, which makes me still consider rewiring this amplifier because those wires are really old. They're really old, and uh, the insulation uh, has seen better days. and might be damaged uh, in some other places rather than, the, rather than uh, just this. And of course there's a nice uh, tech board right here. Always a good thing. 
the resistors uh, are uh, metal film uh, MRT type, my favorite, that I also use in uh, my amp building. So that would be pretty much it for this magnificent amplifier rated at at 100 watts for uh, with four EL EL34 vacuum tubes. Those wires are heater. Not sure why it was done like this. Might be a modification. No. Wait a moment, those wires are not heater, those are heater. So uh, this would be the plate. This would be the control grid. Firmly damaged. And uh, I told uh, Sherry, the owner of the amplifier, not to turn it on uh, before someone uh, takes a uh, closer look at it. And she turned it on. <laughs> and uh, that's why uh, that's why you have to inspect the amplifier before even powering it up. Any vintage tech. Uh, an amplifier, a radio, whatever vintage tech you have, you first have to make sure it is safe to power it on before powering it on. And uh, if you want to power it on, then uh, do it for a uh, current limiter like a uh, light bulb first. Otherwise, you're gonna have a lot of smoke, magic smoke and pyrotechnic effects. Not a good thing. The story behind the amplifier, I've got some data on it uh, in a book. It's an old Polish um, book about uh, electroacoustics in uh, professional settings. This is uh, this is a book from 1977, second edition. I wonder what uh, the first edition would be, but. Uh, the amplifier is covered um, in the in one of the chapters. It has a nice schematics and uh, the technical data of this amplifier is um, that uh, nominal input voltage is 1 volt. Output voltage would be 30 or 120 volts. Uh, because this was a, a PA amplifier and with 30 volts uh, output with our sections of uh, of the output transformer secondary connected in parallel it would be just enough to power a uh, 8 ohm 100 watt speaker system makes it good for hi-fi or bass uh, whatever you have the nominal uh, output power would be 100 watts and uh, now the bandwidth rated bandwidth is uh, 40 hertz to 16 uh, kilohertz but i'm pretty sure that this amplifier can go lower and higher because of the splendid way the output transformer was um, was designed See, uh, it was uh, it was a, a multi-section one on a uh, really beefy core, so uh, I guess that would uh, I will do some measurements on this amp, and uh, I guess uh, it can go lower and it can go higher. The non-linearity of uh, frequency response is. Uh, Minus three to plus one uh, decibels. Total harmonic distortion at uh, thousand kilohertz would be one and a half percent, and uh, for the whole bandwidth would be three percent. 
but with tubes, uh, I guess that uh, it would be mainly mainly even order harmonics, and uh, there's uh, there's also a signal to noise ratio uh, 80 dB. I wonder if I can make it better through through my uh, restoration and modification. I wonder if I can make it better. So this is gonna be a magnificent project for a few episodes at least. Stay tuned for the next one. Bye.